हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अमोल इंगोले इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन कन्वोल्यूशन एनकोडर यूजिंग जनरेटर मैट्रिक्स इन अर्लियर वीडियो यू डिस्कस्ड दैट कन्वोल्यूशन कोड कैन बी डिस्क्राइब्ड बाय द जनरेटर सीक्वेंसेस generator sequences actually specify convolution code completely by the associated generator matrix that means you can use the generator sequence to construct a generator matrix which actually specify the convolution the encoded output of the convolutional code is obtained by matrix multiplication of the input bit stream and the generator matrix that is v is equal to ug it is similar to the lbc where we obtain the linear block code by multiplying the message block with the generator matrix let us see how this matrix generator matrix can be obtained the generator matrix for convolution encoder can be obtained by interlacing the generator sequences g1 g2 so on in the manner shown below uh for this we are going to consider the block size of the convolution encoder as nkm where n is considered as 2 k as 1 and there will be m number of memory units or shift resistors the generator sequences can be written in this way where this is generator sequence g1 and it will have m plus 1 number of bits as a length of the generator sequence this is g2 which will again have the same number of bits like in g1 the first row of the generator matrix is obtained by interlacing the generator sequence g1 and g2 and it is shown like this can see the first row of the generator matrix and it is obtained by interlacing g1 and g2 generator sequences you can see here this is g1 0 this is the first bit of the generator g1 g2 0 this is the first bit of the generator g2 then you can go on interlacing the remaining bits in the same way like this is the third bit of the generator matrix which is nothing but g11 second bit of g1 is interlaced with second bit of g2 which is g21 g21 and so on this is how you will get the first row of the generator matrix the number of column of the generator matrix depends on length of the input given length of the input bit stream given so as that input bit stream is not known we will try to construct a generalized generator matrix the second row or the next row of of the generator matrix is obtained by shifting the previous row by n spaces The example that we are considering here is having n is equal to two. So the next row, in this case, the second row of the generator matrix will be obtained by shifting the first row by two spaces, like this. Why two spaces? Because n is equal to two here. There are two generator sequences given. G1. If you would have given 
three generator sequences in that case we would have shifted the previous next row with three spaces so you just need to shift it right by two spaces n is equal to two in this case and the remaining rows can be obtained in a similar way this is the third row which can be obtained by shifting the second row by two spaces so second row is shifted by two spaces more and we'll have four zeros here two already are there in the second row and two more after shifting so total four zeros and the same generator sequence interlacing you need to uh, go on repeating the these steps and and the number of rows again depends on the input bit stream like generator matrix is a semi infinite matrix as the input is continuous stream so that's why uh, in the in the example we did not uh, show the number of rows and columns because it depends on the input bit stream so the size of the generator matrix would be semi infinite for a finite length input let us say the input bit stream has x bit in it g will have x rows the number of input bits is equal to number of rows of generator uh, generator matrix and the number of columns will be equal to n into m plus x where n is number of output bits in this case in the previous case we considered two bits n is equal to two m number m is nothing but number of memory units and x is nothing but length of your input bit Okay, those many number of columns you will have in generator matrix. Size of the generator matrix will be x by n into m plus x. That's how you can show that the size of the generator matrix. We'll see one example of convolution encoder using generator matrix. The statement of the numerical is impulse responses G1 and G2 for the convolution encoder are given as G1 equal to 1 0 1 1 this is the generator sequence G1 and the generator sequence G2 is 1 1 1 1 you're supposed to construct a generator matrix G draw the convolution encoder and encode the input stream u so here the input bit stream given as 1011 let us solve this if you read the statement you will find that there are two generator sequences given impulse responses given so that that means there will be two output for n is equal to 2 k will be to 1 at any instant of time only one bit will enter the encoder and the input bit stream has got five bits in it p is equal to one zero triple one it has got five bits in it the length of the generator sequence is one more than the depth of the resistor that means the generator sequence has got four bits in it so the number of memory units required will be 3. The constraint length can be obtained using this equation and c is equal to n into m plus 1 and that will be equal to 8. The constraint length actually uh, tells you the number of output beats every input beat is influencing. The given encoder 
these are 2, 1, 3 and 4. These N, K, M. This is the given input stream and the size of as, as we have got a finite length input bit stream. So we can write the size of the generator matrix and it is given by x which is length of the input bit stream in this case it is 5 by n into m plus length of the input bit stream. Okay, it will be 16 that is n is 2 m is 3 and length of the input bit stream is 5 so 5 plus 3 is 8 8 into 2 16 so size of your generator matrix would be 5 rows and 16 columns let us see how we can construct the generator matrix there are two impulse responses given and those are G1 and G2. You can actually write them like this. G10, G11, G12, G13. And the G2 generator sequence can be written as G20, G21, G22 and G23. Let us construct the generator matrix for the convolution encoder. This is what we have already discussed. How the first row of the convolution encoder is obtained by interlacing the generator sequences so if you if you try to construct the first row of the generator matrix by interlacing the generator sequence g1 and g2 like this first bit of g1 is 1 first bit of g2 is 1 so the first two bit in the first row of the generator matrix will be 1 1 can see this here 1 1 and this 1 1 comes from 1 that is first bit of the G1 and 1 which is first bit of G2 1 1. Next 2 bit will come from second bit of G1 that is 0 and second bit of G2 that is 1. So 0 and this 1 will be the next 2 bit. Next 2 bit will be obtained by using the third bit of G1 that is 1 and here third bit of G2 will be 1. So 1 1 will be the next two bits. In the same way you can write the last two bits of the non-zero bit you can say which is 1 and 1 and the remaining columns of the first row will be filled with all zeros because we know this actual size of the generator matrix and it has to be pi u by 16. We could only get 8 columns by interlacing g1 and g2. So the remaining columns will be filled with zeros because we'll need here 16 columns. We could only get 8 columns by interlacing g1 and g2. So the remaining columns will be filled with zeros. That's how you get first row of the generator matrix. The next row, that is in this case, second row of the generator matrix will be obtained by shifting the first row by two spaces. Why two spaces? Because n is equal to 2 here. Why 2? Because there are two generator sequences. So n will be equal to 2. There will be two outputs. So by two spaces, if I shift the first row, you get the second row. Third row can be obtained by shifting the second row by two spaces again. Fourth row can be obtained by shifting the third row by two spaces. And that's how you can get all five rows of the generator matrix and all 16 columns of the generator matrix. Once you have the generator matrix ready, you can now find the output of the generator uh, output of the convolution encoder by multiplying the input bit stream u with the generator matrix just like we did in LBC. The output of your 
convolution encoder will be multiplying your input bit string u with the generator matrix and this is what you will get it the multiplication will be performed in the modulo 2 arithmetic fashion rows into column thank you